Many of you know that I started flying in 1976, but that came to a screeching stop just three years later. But in 2004, after a 25-year hiatus, a chance flight rekindled my love of aviation. What was different from the first time was an appreciation of the people that make up our wonderful community. And I'm not just talking about the common addiction we share, but the common willingness to share, encourage, and help others achieve their aviation goals. I've been both the giver and receiver of those gifts. Like so many of you, I love to try new things, especially when it comes to aviation. After a recent flight and a Piper M600, I came away with an appreciation for how it enabled new missions for me in terms of shorter time and greater distance. Let's face it, pilots can rationalize anything, so while I'm not sure how that could work financially, I remembered I had those same financial concerns when thinking about flying a Cirrus back in 2004. Back then I found a fractional situation that worked for me, which then led to the wonderful three-person partnership in the plane that I fly today. And she is wonderful, but the turbine dream is now infected me. I called an acquaintance who owns a Cirrus Vision Jet about the possibility of a dry lease. He was open to the idea, but I found getting a slot at the Vision Jet Center in Knoxville requires money, patience, luck, and a lot of persistence. Yet I saw another friend make that exact same dream come true, so that energized me to take action. So what did I do? I called Sweet Aviation in Fort Wayne, Indiana. They have a Vision Jet which can be rented as long as you fly with one of their instructors. So it took me some time to put it all together and match my schedule, but we did make it happen just last week. I was joined by a longtime flying buddy who is the same person that provided me the M600 right seat time. So we hopped in the SR22 and headed to KFWA, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I grabbed my GoPro to share the experience with you, but I'll warn you, I didn't use a mount, so excuse the extra movement, and we did have some audio problems, so you'll notice those as well. In terms of the flying experience, it was everything I'd hoped. It started with a great cabin, large windows for everyone, easy access to the pilot seat, and plenty of room front and back as well as side to side. Cabin noise was good, although I still preferred to wear the headset. Regarding the operation of the plane, it was a relatively easy transition from the SR-22, but there are many things that didn't come to me on day one. New checklists to learn, which included new TLAs, three-letter acronyms. And while I'm very proficient on the Garmin Perspective, which is the variant of the G1000, my experience didn't translate to quick action on the G3000. Actually, I found it more like the old Garmin 750. I say old because I haven't flown that in a while. I'm sure long term it won't be an issue, but something that I'm going to need to focus on. The start sequence, which every pilot loves, the whir of the engine of the turbine compared to the, a piston engine starting up. But all you do is select run with a dial and push the start button and then monitor temps as the system provides for a perfect start. Taxiing felt a little bit looser than my SR-22, but the technique is the same. The side stick is extremely heavy, just like the SR-22 when it comes to elevator control at slow or no speed on the ground. But when applying takeoff power, which you do by moving the thrust lever full forward and confirming with the N1% indicator, which is a letter T on that gauge, by the way, the stick will actually start to move towards you as you build speed. It, it's a different feeling than the SR-22, but I'm, I'm sure it's the same in terms of once you get to speed, the controls are feather-like. VR is 90 knots, which is about 10 knots above the SR-22T and 17 to 20 knots above the normally aspirated 22. Similar to the 22, you don't yank the stick back when reaching VR, but rather let the plane fly off the runway. The command bars give you a pitch to 5 degrees. If you want a VX climb, you climb at 91 knots. Now once positive rate is established, you raise the gear, which will probably end up being about 115 knots, which is perfect for raising your approach flaps all the way up. From there, you pull back on the thrust lever to the detent, 
which is MCT, maximum continuous thrust, and you're good to go. There's no red lever, thanks to the FADEC. It's really, really easy. Now, one item I noted on climb out was the command bars were moving more than I'm used to, so I found myself chasing them, which I am sure would be unsettling to any passengers. My flying buddy Tim, who also flew for the airlines, noticed the same thing, and he suggested turning them off. Obviously, it's a pilot-induced thing, so I suspect it's a short-term problem for me. The other realization I made was my adherence to specific approach and landing power settings on my SR-22, which caused me to think that this was going to be more science than art. In the 22, I used 17 inches of manifold pressure, 14 inches, and 11 inches, give or take an inch. They get me the speeds and consistency I need. In the vision jet, the maneuver guide talks about 25% and 30% power settings with and or without 50% flaps. But as we all know, it's all about just use the right speed. I found myself setting percent power stated in that maneuvers guide in an attempt to bring precision to the approach. After my one day experience, I decided, you know what, Mark, you need to relax, just fly the plane. By the way, bringing power to idle and lowering the nose to a 1500 foot per minute descent is a great way to lose altitude. That pressurization is awesome. You just don't feel it. And there's no need to worry about shock heating or shock cooling your engine. As far as other speeds, you can drop your gear at 210 knots. The first notch of flaps can come in at 190 knots and 150 knots for full flaps. And as far as making a good landing, as with all airplanes, nail your approach speeds, you'll nail your landing. So, as I make my first approach and landing in a Cirrus Vision Jet, the emotion I'm feeling is not a first. As I stated earlier, about a month ago, I flew in an M600. The feeling was the same. Both airplanes made me realize that while we are a community bound by our love for aviation, we each bring our personal perspective on what aviation means to us. Flying a Cub elicits one type of feeling, while a high-performance piston single generates another. As I found out, the turbine I experience is yet another. Now I suspect my number of turbine hours will be limited, but I'm excited about the new destinations and adventures that could be there for me. My thanks to Steve Sparks from Sweet Aviation in Fort Wayne, Indiana for making this such an educational and enjoyable experience. And to my flying buddy Tim for his encouragement to constantly move forward and his energy around finding new aviation experiences. And thanks to you for being part of the PF Flying family. Until next week, blue skies and tailwinds.